Here to chat with us today is an incredibly gifted actor, musician, martial artist, all around talented gent. How about a big terrific welcome to Johnny Young Bosch. Let's hear it. Welcome to Terrificon. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're kicking things off. This is the perfect way to do nice it. Nice shirt. What do you love about, what do you, I know the fans. The fans are the best part about the conventions. You, but what, aside from the fans, aside from all the great stories you get to hear and, and the love that's shown, what are your favorite part of doing these conventions? <laughs> that's it. Why, you, why are you going to take away the thing that I enjoy? I know, but um, everybody says the fans. So I know. Answer, it's okay. Let me ask that. you this then. Be specific. Can you give us some really cool fan <laughs> stories then no. uh, that you've had? No. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Shortest panel ever. No. Um, I mean, really, it's, uh, I guess for me, there's, you know, because with voiceover specifically, I guess, um, I, I'm in a booth and I work in a booth and I'm most times by myself, especially now. Uh, we do a lot of remote recording. We're not in the studio like we used to be. Um, so I'm in there by myself just doing what I do and I don't know if it's going to be great. I'm doing the best I can at whatever role I'm doing. Um, but it's not until I show up and then I see, oh, you're wearing a Demon Slayer shirt on. That means you like that show, you know? And so this is where I get to find out if the show was good or not, you know, or if the people like the role that I play. Yeah. So that, it really is, um, it's, this is the reward. It's like if you're on stage and you're, you're doing a play. <laughs> So if uh, you're on stage and you're in a play, you know, immediately you get that, yay, or boo, or whatever, right? Yeah. You have that immediate reaction. And so this is the reaction. This, this is the kind of the reward where I get to go, oh, okay, that was cool. So I spent this many months working on this show, um, or this show is really hard to do. How did it turn out? This is where I get to find out. I talked to so many voice actors and they, I know like back in the day when I'm talking about like, you know, with Andre Romano and they do, you know, they do like Batman, the animated series and things like that. They got together like a radio play mm -hmm. and, would, and it, you could feed off the actor's energy right. and things like that. Then it sort of went into, oh, this person's uh, in another country. They'll just record it there and send it in. So you're, but you're still kind of doing things during the COVID era. Everybody I've talked to, they've had to like trick out their closets to become like little audio studios. Mm -hmm. Have you had to do that at your house well, to where? I had, I had a studio, I have a band, so I already okay. had a booth and microphone, and I already had out. all my stuff, um, which I kind of collected over many years. Um, and so, so I was already set up basically. And so it was still a weird transition um, because then I also had to engineer at the same time, you know, so I had to ride my gain level. Oh, so you're your own crew at that point. Yeah, yeah. And usually <laughs> if you're in the studio, you got a guy that's riding the levels, mm -hmm. you know, he knows you're going to scream, he's going to lower the level and that stuff. Yeah. And so now I, I just do it, you know. So you become an expert at that. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm is that true? Uh, is that tricky, though, uh, getting a voice direction, though, from somebody that's not in an audio booth and they say, you know, hey, Johnny, can you uh, can you give us a little more? You know, is it no, over no, Zoom? It's, a, it's is the it same sort of same thing. thing? All like, right. That stunk. Do it again. You know, um, it, you just uh, go with whatever the director says. You, you hear them. You yeah. Know? And usually even when I'm in the studio, I'm not really just looking at the director the whole time anyways. I'm like focused on what I'm doing. Um, a lot of times, if I'm in there, especially in an anime, I, I usually turn down all the lights, so all I have is the screen and my script, and so I'm just focused on that. Um, and then the director will say things, you know, so I just take it in and go, okay, cool. Strangest yeah. piece of direction you've ever received? Strangest? Um, actually, it was, it was a game. I can't remember the name of the game. Um, but I had a director, and there were these two producers that were in there as well. And so the director I've worked with many times before, um, and when I came, when I got in to work on it, it was like the first day and he kind of was like, gave me kind of heads up. He's like, so they're going to chime in every once in a while, you know? And, and I was like, okay. Um, and so what ended up happening is like every single time, like I would do what I thought was right for the character and then I could see them talking and then my director would come in and, and tell me. You know, and I was like, okay. And usually it'd be like a complete change. I'm like, oh man, maybe I'm way off on this character. Um, and then after a while, he just stopped relaying the message and was just like, why don't you just tell Johnny what you want? And so one time they punched in, they're like, so I did this line and it was like maybe five words. I don't remember what the line was. And they're like, oh, okay. I could see them talking. I'm like, okay, here we go again. And then they, one of them comes in, he's like, actually, can you make that line sound a little happy? And I was like, 
okay, sure, I can make it sound happy. I'll just put a smile on it and uh -huh. I'll say this line, happy. And then um, I do it happy. And then I see them talking again. I'm like, oh, boy. And then the other producer comes in. Actually, you know what? Actually, can you make that sound sad? Can you make it sound sad? <laughs> I'm like, you want the complete opposite? Okay, all right, sure. Um, and then before they let me roll, before the beeps come in, I can see them talking again. And I'm like, what is going on? And they punch in again. You know what? Actually, we want you to make this line sound happy sad it was the actual direction I got uh -huh. and I was like wait a second you want it to sound happy sad it's like complete opposites in, in these five words and they're like yeah and so I look over at my director and he's just like <laughs> I was like uh, all right sure I'll make it happy sad and I just went back to my original version yeah you know which was whatever I wanted because yeah, I was like, I don't even know how to do, how do you do that? How do you go? You know, it doesn't make sense. Um, so I just did my original take and they're like, perfect. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Do you, okay, so at that point though, because I know actors um, sometimes, and I've talked, they sometimes, sometimes they like line reads, sometimes they don't like line reads. Right. At that point though, can, is it advantageous for you to just go, can you just tell me how you want to hear it? And there's the infamous one, I don't know if you've ever heard of, but William Shatner, have you ever heard the William Shatner line read? Uh, I don't know. With, with a, he came in and he says, yeah, can you, can, you, can you do it a different way? And he's like, how would you like me to? And it's just, oh, it's 20 it's, minutes of Shatner brilliance of just destroying somebody in the audio booth. I, I if think you haven't, was that real or was it? It was real. It was real. Yeah, yeah. and the, the producer didn't know how to give him any line read. It was, it was brilliant. But I'm just curious, like, is it that, at that point, is it worth it for you to just go, can you just say it how you want me to say it? Well, here's the thing. I'm not Shatner, <laughs> so, so, I, so I can't be a total douchebag and get away with it. I just wouldn't be working That's fair. here again. Um, That's fair. I keep pulling this towards me. But That's okay. uh, I, there's definitely been times, I, I actually I think I did on that one, okay. where I was like, because they kept, every time I did something, it was like they wanted to change it, and it was yep. usually a complete change. Yep. And I remember saying, I don't know if I'm right for this. <laughs> Um, and I've, I've, there have been a couple shows where the first session started out like, this doesn't feel like I'm right for the part. If everything I'm doing, you're wow. having to completely change, I'm not right for it. Okay. You know? And so I, I said that a couple times. I don't think I'm right for this part. You know, maybe if there's another character wow. you want me to try, I can do that. Um, I'm ha happy to walk away from this. Um, Did that kind of settle things down then at that point? No, I just was. I, it was just a painful session. Okay, well, yeah. those happen. You get through there them, have been and, and, and as long as the check cleared, right? There was one. I could think of one that I was working on a, a game, and uh, this when we had paper scripts. Um, and so, Stephanie Shea, another voice actress, she would uh, she would mark down her takes, like how many takes she would do on a thing. And so I started, I was like, you know what? Like they kept having me like redo the lines over and over again. And you know, do it in a couple times here or there. It's not a big deal. But once you're doing it like five, eight times, then I, this was one of those times where I was like, I don't think I'm right for this part. No, 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 you're right for the part. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm right for the part. If you got me reading it five to eight times, something's wrong. Yeah. Um, no, no, just give us a minute. And I'm like, okay. Um, it's like they're shopping, you know? And so there's, so I started to count like how many lines it's taking, right? And so I had to say the word what, just what, what? Like that my character says what? I had to say that like 22 times. And I'm like, that, how many other ways can I say what? You know? And then I had to do uh, just that, uh, a reaction. Uh, I had to do that 40 times, 40 wow. plus times. And I'm like, this is ridiculous, guys. Yeah. Nobody's going to stop this show and go like, oh my gosh, did you hear how Johnny went? <laughs> it was, that was wrong. To They're wildly it. overthinking so it at I, that point. I eventually found out it was like the producers were, I don't know, just upset with the director and wanted to take it out on that. I don't know, but, yeah. but I was feeling, I was feeling it. Occasionally, it, that doesn't happen a lot. That's, yeah. You know, and then, uh, it's a long time ago since I've had any sessions like that. I did ask your craziest direction, so that, that, that was the question. I want to throw this out there, too. Um, we are going to be doing some Q&A, so you guys are make sure you've got your questions ready. There's a microphone over here. So if you want to, if you want to line up, how are we doing? Are we going to have them line up or just kind of jump up as they go? Line up. You can line up. Just make sure you're not blocking anybody from the back there if you have any questions. We're going to get to that. While you're kind of thinking of your questions or getting this in mind, we'll, talk, we'll chat a little bit about it. But if you have any questions, you can kind of make your way over to the mic now, uh, and we'll turn those over to that. I do want to ask you about, I want to go back some ways, um, your origin story. <laughs> what, what interests you in acting? How did that interest first start? 
And who was one of your inspirations? I think I, I think I might know one of your inspirations early on, but you can tell us. Um, it wasn't really for me. It wasn't acting. Acting wasn't the first thing that that I was into. It was more martial arts. I was a martial artist, and so. Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung, uh, Yung Byo, like a bunch of these old school Billy Chung, like Kung Fu theater guys. Like, I just like those guys, and I just wanted to do that stuff, you know. Um, and, you know, and I could. I was an acrobatic. I knew martial arts, and so that just was a lot of fun. But did you teach yourself martial arts? I, I read I that you taught, taught yourself. There was a lot <laughs> that I had self-taught. I mean, it was like I saw Jackie Chan do something cool, and I went outside, and I went and tried to do it. Okay, know? on and that I level. Learned how to flip off of a tree. Like, I did a lot of that stuff on my own. Like, martial arts, you can't really, like, you can teach yourself to, you can teach yourself some kicks and some yeah. tricks, but you're not going to have the practical application until you actually go in and study. And right, right. Discipline. So, 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 yeah, I did learn some things before I went in, and then I started, then I actually went in. And Were you, like, practicing on your friends or something? Or like, my how brother, you... mostly. <laughs> yeah, my brother. How does that yeah. work? It didn't always work. Uh, okay. But, uh, but yeah, it's that I would build my own contraptions. You know, I'd see like, they, it's called a wooden man. You know, so yeah. I built one of those. I built all sorts of stuff that I would, you know, see in movies and be like, ah, that looks really cool. And destroy. And you build it. a thing that you could hit that it'll turn, it'll spin around and try to hit you. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. That's I mean that's uh, pretty amazing too. And what was it about? What was it about um, Bruce Lee film? Because I know, like, I kind of grew up on him too. I, I was probably watching him at a much younger age than I should have been watching him. But it was like. It was always like there'd be a hundred guys coming at him at once, and there's, it was almost like so ridiculous, like nobody could ever do that. But what he did in that moment was amazing. The the athleticism. He was just dynamic. Yeah. You know, Ta- what was it? You yeah. watch like so you could watch films or whatever. You watch there. He was just different. Yeah. He was. You know. There's. The, the kung fu guys would have like a very like it was a it was a dance you know it was a very yeah. choreographed dance you know and then Jackie Chan would do some cool stuff you know where he'd flip but that was a little later but Bruce Lee came along and it wasn't this kind of like choreographed like dance move thing it was more like it's like fighting yeah like so he was doing like actual fighting techniques even though it was choreographed it just looked a little more real yeah you know um, I, if that makes sense it was almost like a dance it was almost like um like a ballet or something like it was just the way he did it the way he was so fluid He's and what he graceful yeah. yeah and it just was like you could almost suspend disbelief that this person could take out a hundred guys in, in yeah. less than 30 seconds um it was just so amazing too do you, you folks have some questions we got a microphone right over here i know yeah go ahead i know we got some anime questions from this guy right here he's the anime expert everyone's afraid so, to go, go walk yeah good there's the a, there, there is literally a microphone right there that you can walk up to and speak words into it and we will hear them and and we will provide answers or one of us will Sure. Um, so what's, your, this, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, Tom. Actually Tom? from like five minutes down the road. Tom from five minutes down the road. Welcome, Tom, to Terrificon. How is the weather five minutes down the road? Is it uh, brutally hot? Uh, about the same as here. Okay. Well, you're in air conditioning. Go for is it. Is this yes. the first panel in the day? This, you're, I said you're kicking this up. No pun intended. Well, you could kick it literally oh, off. So but we're, we're launching this today right. with you. You, you. Everything this weekend depends upon you. <laughs> How this weekend goes all depends on everything right here. I'm sorry, Tom, from five minutes away. What is your question? Um, so we got to speak to Steve Gardner's last year. Um, oh, Steve? And he talked yeah. about uh, when um, you, Karen Ashley, and him first jumped into your roles on Power Rangers. Mm. And then the hectic time period with you jumping in and then jumping right into the filming in Australia. Yeah. And also how much, uh, I got to read this, Paul Schreier and Jason Narvey actually helped you guys with the uh, acting. Can you give us a little, per, uh, a little bit, bit of that from your perspective? With the acting? Well, there, well, with, uh, with the whole jumping right in, the hectic schedule and everything, just. Yeah, uh, no, it was nuts. Yeah, we, um, let's see, where do I even start with that? <laughs> we, we auditioned, there's auditions, kind of, there's a cattle call, auditions nationwide. So they had these little auditions kind of like uh, American Idol where they hold an audition in l- cities all over the, the states, right? So they did that basically. Um, and so, they, but they ended up picking three of us from Texas. Um, and uh, yeah, there's an audition process. I remember there's thousands of people there. Um, and then I got callbacks in uh, California. And uh, I remember going to those call, and I'd never been away from home really uh, by myself. And so I was like in California by myself 
auditioning for this this big show and uh, I remember going into the room and there's like a bunch of Asian dudes in the line and there's a bunch of Hispanic guys and African American girls and I'm like well I'm an Asian guy so I guess I'm gonna be in this line um, so then and then they would just like mix us up and then they and then it didn't say we didn't even know we were auditioning for um, like to replace anyone we had no idea what it was until we saw the script and it said new black ranger new red ranger new yellow ranger and then we were like oh i think we're replacing people you know <laughs> i was like what is this you know is that so the first time it was like oh is this is that what's happening are they leaving what's the story um, but we had no idea really um and then yeah and then we, i remember we also and maybe steve talked about this too i know karen does but we when we uh they brought us into this room all these people in a room we sat us all down and they're like, all right. And then he announced our names. You guys are the new Rangers. And we're like, yeah. But wow. all these other people are like, oh. and it's like, this is awful. Why'd you do it like this? Welcome um, to showbiz. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so then, and then immediately, it was like, we didn't get to go home. It was like, you were there. You're staying here. Wow. And you can have stuff uh, shipped to you. And, and I remember... I didn't have a bed. I had like a, you know, a, a suitcase full of clothes that I used as my bed. I laid it out and I slept in. Um, didn't have a TV. Um, I had brought nunchucks with me, so I had my nunchucks with me. <laughs> um, I had no food. I remember there's a weekend where I didn't even have any food and I was like starving. It was like two or three days I was starving and then Karen happened to call me up and uh, I was like, hey, do you have food? <laughs> and she's like, come on over and fed me. And so I survived that weekend. Um, but it was mad, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was like 14 hour, 16 hour days. It was nonstop working and wardrobe fittings and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, going through uh, the action sequences and, and whatever else. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And then, then all of a sudden we're going to Australia, you know, and then we're promoting the movies. It was, it was, it was a fast moving train. It was just something that, it, was, it just kind of was happening. There, and there really wasn't a chance for, there wasn't a slowdown. I, think, I feel like maybe there's one moment, because I had mentioned I wanted to be an action star, I wanted to do martial arts on camera, and that kind of was my dream. And, uh, but like we were busy, and then we'd come home and I'd crash, you know, and fall asleep, and then get up early in the morning, five in the morning, and I'd have to go back again. Um, and so it, it didn't really get to sink in, you know, until there's like two weeks uh, into this thing, I think it was, and um, we were at this park, and I had to put on these rollerblades and figure out, I, I don't know how to rollerblade, so I'm like trying to learn how to rollerblade in this park. And the, the sun's coming up, there's dew on the grass, the, the crew, they're setting up the lights and all that stuff, I'm out there trying to like figure out this rollerblade thing. And then as I'm looking around, I'm like, holy crap, I, I've made it. This is it, this is that thing I've always wanted to do and I'm here. And I started hearing all these people that I grew up with that were like telling me, uh, don't stop wasting your time with that stuff. You're not going to be able to do this. You don't, you're just a dreamer. You're just, this is not going to happen to a person like you. We live in Texas. You, you don't get to do these things. And so I remember all these voices of people, of friends and things that I remember hearing people telling me that you can't accomplish that. You're not going to be able to do that. You know? um, and I remember thinking, oh, I'm here. You can do it. You can, absolutely. If you have a dream, it's just, you just got to take that shot. What made you jump over that? Like, what made you keep going? when everyone around you was saying, don't do this. I, I know you've been, there's a belief in yourself, know. but there what was, a, was it that, just for advice for anybody here that might be going through the same thing? Actually, I'll tell you a story. There was so, so, so when I saw that there was an audition, my instructor saw it in the paper and he's like, you should go give it a shot. So that was the first step, you know, it was him seeing that and saying, I think you could do something like this. Um, but then when I started telling people I was gonna do this, everybody was like, don't wait, don't do that. Eh, don't waste your time, you know, uh, you better think about a career, you know, um, uh, and, and, and there's a lot of this doubt that was like falling in, and I started, I remember thinking like, yeah, I probably won't be able to do it, it it's probably not going to happen, um, but then there was this thing inside me that just kept saying, yeah, but what if, mm. you know, and I remember telling this story before at a convention, and there's a guy at, in the con, he came to the table afterwards, he was like, you know what, I saw that same newspaper paper article, and I remember thinking that it would never happen, and so I didn't go. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's, so the difference is. That was the other road. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Is that, so you'll never know. Wow. If you have, because we, uh, throughout life, in anything that you do, you're gonna have that other voice that's like, you're not good enough, you can't do it, nobody cares about you. You're gonna have that voice that says you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna whatever, right? 
And yeah, you could listen to that. Sometimes that it's good advice. You know, it's like, yeah, don't jump out of an airplane without a parachute. Some of that's good advice. But some of it's like, it's just taking that chance, you know? And it's like, well, okay, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Yeah. Absolutely nothing, right? Like, I'll be in the exact same spot, you know? Yep. Okay, maybe I'll be embarrassed, you know? You know, maybe then everybody's gonna be like, I told you so, but Big you never deal. know until yeah. you do that. What right? if, that, the two you know, great words. Two of the greatest words. You just words. gotta go for it. Yeah. Anyways, that was a very great long question. answer. For that, no, that's a great question. Way to kick things answer. off. Thank you. How about the next one? I think we got some anime. St you have anime questions? Is that what it? Okay. Who? Uh, name and where you're from? Hmm? Your name and where you're from? I'm Jivan Santiago. And I'm yep. Right into the microphone so we can hear you. Yep. I'm Jivan Santiago and I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Cool. What's your question? Of, out of all the anime characters that you play, which one is your most favorite? Wow. You're asking me to choose my favorite child. Wow. <laughs> and here's the thing. I've asked that before. Everyone, every parent has one. They just don't say it out loud. So that question always is, will you say this out loud? I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> actually, I have two lying. kids and... Uh, one of them's got to be a favorite. Even if you wouldn't say it out loud. That's I know. not true. All they're right. both very different All kids, right. you know? All right. All um, right. I, they're one, one's easier. That doesn't make we may have a winner. that one my favorite. But uh, <laughs> um, anyways, I don't know. I, there's a lot of them. You know, I, I've, I don't know how many characters I've played, maybe three or 400 different characters. And so it's really hard to choose. There are some that, that, that uh, are a little more special, like Ichigo or Vash or Kanada. Or Lelouch. So there's a, there's a bunch like that, that that are, you know, but it's mostly any of the ones that I have at my table. Those are my favorites, <laughs> you know. Um, and because uh, I usually, I end up forgetting the other ones, you know. And, I, and, I, and people come up and I'm like, oh, yeah, I did do that. Uh, yeah. Um, and well, you were asking me, like, were you asking me about Nobi? Why Nobi wasn't? Somebody was asking me, well, one of my characters was not on my banner. And I was like, oh, it usually is on my banner, but I just <laughs> forgot about it, you know. Um, not one of my favorites, but I, lo I liked it. I had a lot of fun actually working on it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably whatever one you're working on at the time, right? You're just invested it, well, that you energy have to. and yeah. It's like you have to find something the hook. in the character that you're like, you can relate to so that you can be that, you know? And it's like, I need to be real in this space. What is it with this character? Ichigo is like how much he wanted to protect his, his family, his friends, that stuff. And I'm like, I can connect with that. I can be Ichigo, you know? And so it's just finding that thing that you're like, that's it. That's the, that's the moment where I realized that I could be this character. So I do that with every character, you know? So it's hard, harder to choose in that way. And the worlds are so different. If you go from Bleach to Naruto, to uh, they're, it, they're so different. It's much easier, like in Naruto, I play like 15 to 20 different characters. It, it's easy for me to say Sorcery is my favorite because it's all the same world, you know? And I'm like, even though I play in other characters, this one's better, um, you know? They Good all question. die. Good, well. Like all of them in Naruto, then. yeah. If I'm cast in Naruto, I'm gonna die. <laughs> so I just know that. It's good knowing that ahead of time. Good question. Thanks. And our next question. Hi, my name is uh, Guillermo Hagueros, and I'm from New York. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm I'm really nervous. I'm sorry, but uh, Johnny Young Bosch, you are my favorite voice actor, and it's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm really excited. Wow. Thanks, man. I I'm appreciate like, that. oh man. There's a lot of voice actors. My, That's pretty my, high praise. <laughs> my my heart's racing, so I'm kind of sorry. If I'm kind of nervous. So uh. So how, when you got into acting, uh, how did you go from acting to voicing anime? All right, so from Power Rangers to anime. Well, okay, so there's a Japanese stunt team on Power Rangers, Alpha Stunts, Kuchi Sakamoto, a bunch of those guys. They wanted to shoot an action film. And so they, they cast me because I could do my own stunts. And this was after Power Rangers. And so their camera it was a Japanese camera um, that was bought and purchased in Japan. And then the sound equipment was from the, uh, the American guys that were running the uh, Power Ranger uh, second unit audio. And so when they recorded, for whatever reason, it didn't work. So the audio they were recording did not fit the uh, frame rate of the uh, Japanese camera. And so I had to basically dub myself over this movie that we shot. And as I was in the studio dubbing myself, the producer walked in, heard my voice, and he's like, hey, you got a good hero voice. I was like, cool, thanks, I'm playing a hero, so 
makes sense. <laughs> um, and then uh, he's like, no, 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 I, I, uh, you got a, a decent hero voice. And he's like, you know what, I, I'm doing these, I've got this animation stuff, you know, maybe you can come in and audition. And I was like, okay, sure. Um, and this was after Power Rangers, so I, I needed a job. And so I went to this audition, and they played me like, um, they played me an English track over this uh, anime. And then they played me the Japanese, and they were vastly different. And he was like, can you do something like the tone of the Japanese? And I was like, yeah, I can give it a shot. And so I auditioned, and then a couple weeks later, they called me in and said, all right, so you're going to be playing Vash and Trigun. And so Vash was like the first one that kind of opened the doors for me. Um, and then somebody was like, hey, we heard you in Trigun. Will you come audition for this or that? And so it, then, and I was, that was earlier on in the anime game, right? The anime was still like you had to go buy it, it you know, on a VHS or something somewhere. <laughs> Um, and track down different volumes. So I was at that time, and so I was like earlier on, and so then my name kind of got passed around here and there, different directors, and people heard me and this and that, and so I ended up just, you know, stumbling into it. And because I, I the other thing was I, being half Asian at that time, there was, there was no half Asian roles. I was lucky to get on Power Rangers, you know, as the Asian guy. Um, in fact, they, my middle name is actually Jay, young as my mom's maiden name. And they brought me into the office and they were like, all right, so people don't know that you're Asian. So we need to make your name a little more Asian. <laughs> you know? and like, what's your mom's maiden name? All right, so we're gonna change your name. And so, yeah, I ended up having to change my name so that it sounded a little more Asian. So people knew that's the Asian guy. Anyway, so after Power Rangers, <laughs> it's hard for me to get a role um, because I was auditioning for you know, they'd send me out for the Chinese guy or whatever, you know, or they'd send me out for a Caucasian role. I just wouldn't get it because I didn't fit the mold, right? Um, so thankfully, voiceover came in for me, and that's like, I was like, well, hey, I could still act, and I could, it doesn't matter what I look like, you know, I can be a kid with orange hair or whatever, you know, and so I just got to keep doing that, and I just, this is it, then this is what I'm going to do until things change, and things have started to change, you know, and now it's, now there's a lot more I guess it's open to different ethnicities and different things like that now. Um, so that's changed, you know. And now you could just you could buy your own cameras and write your own stuff and do that too. Uh, I got a few more. I got, I'll go to I'll go to two more. Um, did you go to college for acting, or I was actually I registered. Okay, so I auditioned for Power Rangers, and then I went and registered for college to study film. And then I got the call back to go to California, you know. And so I didn't actually get to go. I was in a dorm room when they called, you know. And they're like, hey, so we want you to come to California, audition again. I was like, peace, see ya. And I went, you know, and I was like, this is what I want to do. And so I just got to do that, you know. Uh, so I got to skip all of that. Not saying you should skip college. I'm just saying <laughs> I, didn't, I was going to go study film, and I got to go and be doing film. So it is more direct for me. We'll have to get to the next question because we do have a line behind you. So thank you for those. Appreciate it very much. So yeah, good job. Hi, my name is Octavius and I'm from uh, Arizona. Hey. And uh, my question is, uh, if all your characters had to like go in like a battle royale, like fight to the death, <laughs> who would be the one winner of of that? Of that to fight I love these each questions. Other? All, all all the characters have to fight each other until one person survives. Oh gosh. All enter only one. Think win and why? Um, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I love these questions. I mean, Ichigo is going to be up there probably. Um, well, Broly is now, you know, so. Um, what, about, what about the Black Ranger? Do you think the Black Ranger could beat Ichigo? Yeah. I, I think he like already his, has his own his answer. Full, like, hollow form? What about Broly? <laughs> You know, I don't know. Like, once they go Super Saiyan and all that, I don't... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think he I has think his answer and wants you to agree yeah, with yeah, it. But I, you that's think? why I love you, conventions like this, the because of these nerd Ranger? debates think, that we get into. I think into. either Adam oh, Park or Ichigo. Uh, who? Adam Park or Ichigo. Adam Park or Ichigo. Well, Adam Park <laughs> is a regular dude. <laughs> Well, he, he can morph to different rangers. Yeah, I mean, well, I, can he? I mean, Tommy's got the Master Morpher, so I mean... Uh, yeah, but they haven't brought me back with a Master Morpher. They only brought me back as a Black Ranger, yeah. you know? Um, actually, did they? I don't know. There was, like, they, they sort of, like, brought my 
color back, but I wasn't in the suit, yeah. you know, so I don't know if that's supposed to be me. Um, yeah, this would I, make for a great crossover event, though. I mean, maybe he's got the idea for the great crossover event. You can just d voice everything and get paid like lots of money. Maybe. Yeah, I do feel like Ichigo is a little more powerful. I think here's your answer. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, straight from the source. Yeah. Do we, do we have a do we have a a confirmed date for Bleach? Confirmed? No. Well, thank, thank you for your time. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's coming back. It is coming back. I, they, they, I mean, I haven't even started working on it yet. So, yeah. Thank you. I, but they, they know that I'm fast. You know, I'll get it done. Don't worry about it. It'll get done. Um, I, what's coming, I, October, I believe, is the date that they're the, the main release date. But I, I don't know the actual date, or that's a month. Um, but that's the Japanese. I don't know if we're releasing ours around the same time. If we are, they better get me in the booth soon. <laughs> it takes some time. To I put just those booked together. another role, like <laughs> a, a film that's going to take me out for like a month. So I'm like, they're, they're going to wait a while. Next thing I know, Ichigo is going to be voiced by someone else. <laughs> Again, welcome to showbiz. Yeah. Right. Next question. Yeah. Uh, Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Elijah Miller, and I'm from Waterbury, Connecticut. And uh, my question is, um, what was it like to work on the? the production for the Akira dub, and did you know it was gonna be successful? Or did you know it was successful? Uh, yeah, I knew, I knew Akira, for sure. Um, I saw that, and that was back when they still called it Japanimation. Um, and so I was very familiar with it, so getting to work on that was very exciting. Um, and I remember there's, there's a special edition DVD, if you have that, it's, there's, a, there's like some, interviews with some of the cast and um and i remember doing the interview like a full interview but at the very beginning of the interview they there's like a moment where they ask you oh, know what was it like getting the call and i was and i remember just being like super excited about it i was like oh yeah i was, I was excited i got the call i was like oh this is and i was like rambling on kind of fast that's all they have of me in that <laughs> Blu-ray, whatever, DVD, special edition interviews. Like, they don't even have inter me, say, answering any other questions. Just that. It's just, just me, be just in the very beginning, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Did I not answer anything else correctly? Um, that was pretty awesome, though. I, I love that, uh, Akira. Uh, and I remember when I first watched it, I was very confused. Like, I was like, what is going on? Um, but, uh, and then also thinking, like, this is very adult, <laughs> you know? um, but uh, it was pretty cool. I dug it. Yeah, I was glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Darren. I'm from Louisiana, and uh, obviously you worked on a bunch of different, you know, Power Rangers with Mighty Morphin Zero and Zio. And so, was it difficult to transition into Zero, into Zio, or was it a little easier because it was the same character? It was basically the same character. We just changed our clothes, you know, and the story adjusted a little bit here and there. So, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too crazy. Um, I got to do a bit more in Zio. And even in Turbo, they st like I, I had a little more freedom, um, I felt like. Like, when I came on in, in Mighty Morphin, I was just a shy, quiet guy. I called myself the background ranger because I'd be in the back, you know, Tommy, and then be in the front, and I'd be back here in the back like this. <laughs> You know, that's all I did. Uh, in fact, I posted this a while ago. It might have been over a year ago now, but you could probably find it. There's a, there's a GIF of, uh, it's like a Valentine's Day episode, and it's like Tommy is giving a rose or a thing of flowers to uh, uh, Kimberly, Pink Ranger, and he's, he's like, uh, and it's like this, right? This is the motion, and I am in the background just like this. <laughs> like, com like completely dead inside. <laughs> I posted it on my Instagram, so if you scroll through, you'll eventually find it, but it's like me just like, and they're all like, <laughs> with their little rose stuff and Valentine's. I'm just, and uh, so yeah, <laughs> so that's what I did mostly in, in Mighty Morphin. And so Zio, I got to do a bit more. I had like some episodes and things like that, um, but I, I still was like more just a martial artist, so I didn't even know what I was doing. It wasn't until Turbo where I was like, oh, maybe I should be doing this, and I started thinking about more of like, what am I doing? What's my purpose? You know, why am I here in this scene? And so I started to act out a little bit and start, started to add and, and, and do that. And I did some of that throughout, but I didn't do, I did more in Turbo, even though they ended up cutting us halfway through, you know. Um, but uh, 
No, so the transition wasn't that hard. You know. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Sure. Next question. Uh, hello? Hi. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Kevin. I'm from Meriden, Connecticut, and I have uh, two questions if that's okay. Quick, if we can be quick ones, yes. Quick. Okay. <laughs> yes. What was your favorite fight choreography from Power Rangers? Oh, favorite fight choreography? Uh, Game of Honor. The opening to Game of Honor was pretty cool. There's a, it's like uh, the other nin the, there was ninjas, you know, as the other rangers, but it was like fighting off these other ninjas. And, you know, I got to do a few of my tricks and things, and it was super cool. That's awesome. And uh, my second question is, what was your favorite scene you did for Ichigo? Scene for Ichigo? Hmm, that was a, lot a long of time ago. Man, a lot of favorites. Uh, you have to go back. I don't know. There's there's a lot of moments that I really liked. Um, like I I mean, well, it's Hollow Ichigo. I liked when Hollow Ichigo came out the first time when he fights Byakuya. That was pretty cool. Um, there was a lot of cool things like that. Even the first time he fought with Kimpachi or Renji or that the first like the beginning with uh, Rukia and him getting the power. That was a pretty cool moment. Um, yeah, there. I, Actually, most of the fighting stuff, most of whatever he was leading up to a fight or something was pretty cool, you know. And there's a lot of funny moments, too, in there, you know, uh, making fun of Rukia's drawings. Rukia, why do your drawings suck so bad, uh, you know? There's a lot of that. I remember there's one where she comes out of the, the closet with one of her drawings, and, uh, and then she's, like, trying to, like, say things to him. He's like, uh-huh, yeah, oh, mm, mm -hmm. He's just, like, doing his homework. Really? Ah. Uh. I just remember doing that and just thinking it was so funny. I guess another moment is 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 a is a two flapper, and it was uh, uh, he goes in there and was it the visors or something like that, and they're like, oh, so you finally decided to join us, and uh, in the two flaps, it was the script said no way, you know, and that would fit, but it didn't feel like didn't feel strong enough for me. He's like, you ready to join us? And Ichigo was gonna say no way. It just didn't feel right. I was like, this is weird. And so instead, I said, bite me. And, uh, and Wendy Lee was directing, she was like, looks at the, her script, and she's like, wait, what? She's like, am I in the wrong place? And, and uh, she's like, yeah, okay, it works. <laughs> and she kept it. Um, so it's cool. cool. Dug it. Thank you for your question. We've got about five minutes left, and we're, I, well, I had, we had three round. questions. Yeah, let's go speed, speed round. round. So. Thank you very much. Yep. Next one. Okay. Yep. Uh, hi. I'm Hello. Ter I'm, Terrell I'm Terrell. I'm from Connecticut. My question is... What was the hardest character to play as? Broly. How come? Screaming. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of screaming. And then after those sessions, there's no talking. Because I, I can't anymore. They yeah. put that at the end of the day. I talked to Kevin Conroy when he was doing a lot of stuff and even like video games for Batman and stuff. He'd say, that they what, the growling? Yeah. Or they put that at the end of the day. They're really so, yeah. good at like setting that stuff yeah. up and they know. They know that it's a stressful Throw thing. Well, I, I think just called. Dragon Ball in general is a very stressful, you know, um, as far as like on your vocal cords. Um, but yeah, so I would say for sure that one is definitely. That's the one where... I know when I go into a session, if there's going to be screaming, I'm not going to be able to talk after. You know? <laughs> yeah. But it's right for the character because that's what the character is. Thank you for the question. Thank you. No problem. Next question. Hi, I'm Melody. I'm from Gales Ferry, Connecticut, five minutes down the road. Five minutes down another yeah. five minutes down the road. So my question is, um, a couple years ago, back in 2015, you did a cameo in Bat in the Sun and Superpower Beatdown. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. when you came in as Adam, the Black Ranger, to fight Ryu after he in the alternate ending when he supposedly yeah. beat mm -hmm. Green Ranger. Who would win? Oh, me, definitely. Okay, good. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, or Adam. Adam would win. Actually, what I wanted to do, and see, that I don't even know. I think that it would have been cool if they would have done something more. But I, I was hoping that they would do a thing where they combine a few of my anime characters with uh, the Black Ranger. So it'd be like, you know, it's like a, almost a bunkite out, you know, uh, so if Bat uh, and the Sun asked you to do that, would you? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but I don't think so. I think that's long since, you know, gone. So I don't. I don't think that they'll ever have me come in for that. Right. We've well, got your you. next pitch meeting set up. Now you yeah, know right. what to do. And you're a director too, so maybe you can direct. <laughs> I'll direct my own. Yes. My name is Patrick. I'm from Meriden, Connecticut. It's an honor to be here and be able to ask you a question. All right. um, Thanks, man. My question is. What was it like coming into the Devil May Cry series as Nero? 
in four? And I mean, first, I was excited. Um, it was scary at the same time because I'm playing a new character. This was in part four. Um, I got to go to Japan to work on that to do the motion capture stuff. And so that's why you're wearing the suit and they have all the shiny balls on so they can track, track you, right? Uh, and so it was fun. It was scary, you know, but uh, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Um, and then, um, but the story wasn't complete. You know, they only hinted at who his father was, and it was a big mystery, and that was a moment that I really wanted to have. Um, but they didn't really have that in part four. Um, and then there was like a, a reboot that they tried to do that was unsuccessful, thankfully, um, because then they were like, well, what about this version of it, special edition? Do you guys like this? And then people bought that and liked it. Um, and so being able to come back and do five was just extra special because we got to get to that side of the story of who his father was and that confrontation. Um, it was very satisfying. You know, I think we were the number one action game. Um, so it was, it was cool. And I hear a rumor that they're working on a six or ideas of a six, which would be super cool too. Um, but I remember we had an audition for a five. We had a re-audition because they, they thought we were, they were like, well, how old are you guys now? Can you still do stuff? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for that question. We've got about two minutes left and we're going to go real speed round. So just yell your question in. We'll get you a quick answer. All right. Uh, my question was, uh, or is, um, since you vo voiced both uh, Narukami and Adachi from Persona 4, what was it like voicing the protagonist and the main antagonist of a series? Well, okay, so when I worked on I didn't know I was going to voice Narukami. Um, I only thought I was voicing Adachi, um, and nobody gave me any heads up. So I was in there already working on that, and we were starting to get to the end of that uh, session and finish up Adachi. I think there's probably a couple sessions. But this was, we were about to wrap up Adachi, and I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna be finished early today. Um, and they're like, hey, as soon as we're done with Adachi, you're gonna voice Narukami as well, or the protagonist. And I was like, oh, really? Uh, I was like, what does he sound like? And so I started to panic, because I didn't think about limiting my range, so I had another character here. You know, I was like, I'm just gonna do whatever feels right for this character, because um, I had no heads up. Um, and then, and I don't even think that they knew. I thought they were just like, ah, whatever. And then basically what they said was, ah, he's just the character you play, so it's a bunch of call-outs, punch noises, and reactions. And I was like, oh, okay, so I'll just gruff him up. And that will be enough probably to get by. And it worked until more games came out. And then the anime came out. I'm like, I'm talking to myself now, so I gotta change it. <laughs> so I had to like actually adjust them to separate them a little bit more so that it would make sense and it wouldn't sound like I'm totally talking to myself. Um, it was tricky. But Adachi was a lot of fun, and Narukami ended up being a pretty cool character, too. Super fun. Um, loved them both. Uh, and it's not often you get to do that thing. It actually kind of makes sense, actually. You know, it's almost like they meant to do it, but they didn't. You know, it, it kind of just worked out. Um, it's kind of perfect, I think. All right, two quick questions. Thank you for Let's your time. Get up. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, my question is. Um, what was your favorite like line or moment from the two characters that you voiced from Persona 4? Oh gosh, favorite I line. Uh, I don't know if I have a favorite line. I got think. So the anime had a lot of fun stuff, but I can't remember. It, it's been such a long time. Um, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, the all of them. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know. It's funny because people have me say things that aren't from it. You know, and then those end up becoming the thing that I'm like, why do I remember this? <laughs> Who wants to talk about murder? Like, I don't think that's actually in there. But uh, it might be on the, there might be an abridged or something. Um, or at least I keep seeing pictures of him with cabbage. Um, yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, and I'm, I'm used to shouting Persona and Izanagi. Uh, so I don't really, yeah. I don't really know if I have like a line. There were moments in the anime I, I remember, I don't remember them, but I, I do recall many moments in the anime that just had me cracking up. Yeah. Um, just with Narukami, I just can't remember what those moments are, unfortunately. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you. you. And last question. Hi, uh, Alex from Hartford. Um, so just kind of want to ask, now that Bleach is coming back, how do you feel about that huge gap, kind of? and coming back to it? You know, uh, I didn't like that it took so long, but I also think that because it took so long, the animation is gonna be awesome, you know? Because if you look at the way it was in the beginning, you know, it, it was a 
cool show, but the animation was, you know, it was earlier on. It was still good stuff, and then it got better as the series went on. So now it's going to be amazing. So I, I'm glad that it's coming back, especially for this arc, because yeah. this is going to be like, a really cool arc you oh, know yeah. to see all of that stuff happen and the story is done you know although I hear that it might be continuing but uh, you know the bulk of that arc is done you know so that's it's pretty exciting thanks so much we appreciate it Johnny you're gonna be here all weekend you're gonna be down at the table signing. not all weekend no sorry that was today incorrect. and tomorrow today okay and tomorrow will not be here Sunday. today and tomorrow so make sure you get to meet him at the table thank you so much for being yeah. here thank you uh, we appreciate, appreciate it let's hear it for thank Johnny you. young Bob Next up is Sean Kanan, moderated by the terrific Rob Pervarnik. Thanks, folks. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Maisie richardson Sellers, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be a legend and hit that like button, and most importantly, have fun and follow your fandom.